Let's jump into ThreatWire. CVE of the week goes to the research team over at Microsoft for their fines with CVE 2024-37085. The CVE is not actually for a Microsoft product, but instead for the VMware ESXi hypervisor technology. Turns out all it takes in order to get admin access on an ESXi hypervisor system is for a group called ESX admins to be created on the system and then a user is added to it. This only works in situations where the domain group of that name didn't already exist. And no, really, it's just creating a user group, adding the user, and then you automatically get given admin access. Any member that joined that created group was automatically given admin access. And the group, upon creation, was being created with full admin access by default, regardless of who made it. To spell it out again, the group didn't exist on some computers, so bad actors would create the group and then boom, get full admin. They could also rename any group to ESX admin and then be given full admin privileges when added to a, that new group. Microsoft confirmed to have seen this vulnerability be used in production by threat actors already to enable deployment of ransomware and more. A patch has been released by VMware, so be sure to update your ESXi hypervisor ASAP. A quick update about the CrowdStrike outage. On July 25th, the CEO of CrowdStrike went on to LinkedIn to share that over 97% of Windows sensors for the CrowdStrike Falcon product are back online. They did try to do some damage control after the outage by sending teammates and partners $10 gift cards for food delivery. Apparently those got flagged as fraud and were all canceled by the delivery service. Oops. At the same time, apparently Google was in conversation to purchase cloud security company Wiz for $23 billion. Just as soon as the story broke, news came out that Wiz walked away from the deal instead choosing to IPO. I wonder if the CrowdStrike situation had any effect on Wiz's decision to walk. Really makes you think. An operation of over 3,000 ghost accounts on GitHub were discovered by the team at Checkpoint Research. These accounts were identified to be a part of a network, now named Stargazer's Ghost Network, which works to distribute malware and malicious files across the internet. The entire operation is highly sophisticated, completely automated, and highly efficient. At the time of Exposé, the Checkmart team found that there were over 2,000 repositories used to distribute malware. During a campaign that took place around January 2024, the network distributed Atlantida Stealer, a new malware family that steals users' credentials and cryptocurrency wallets along with other PII. This campaign was highly effective as in less than four days, more than 1,300 victims were infected with the Atlantida Stealer. There are four kinds of accounts that are used to keep the Stargazer network up and running, a repository account, commit account, release account, and the Stargazer account. Each account plays a different role in keeping the network running and due to the fractional nature of the operations each account performs, they're easily able to patch when taken down. Two repos are used to serve malicious content. First, the repo links to a second repo containing a malicious release that unsuspecting users can download. Accounts in the malicious network star, fork, and contribute to bad repos to add legitimacy. Being a link to a GitHub project also adds legitimacy to unsuspecting users and helps bypass any suspicious link filters. The team at Checkpoint believes the links to be distributed through Discord as many of the key terms in the bad files include audience growth on various social platforms as well as cracked software keys. It's also been discovered that the ability to purchase stars, followers, forks, and watches on GitHub has begun to appear on various dark web forums. Overall, the story is very interesting. The complexity of the network to set up and its complete automation is a fascinating read, and I highly recommend the whole write-up, which is linked below. A new Python package has been identified as malicious by the team at Chexmarks. This Python package, available through PyPy, was not intended for the average user the team outlines in their July 26 blog post. Upon download and run, the malicious Python package first checks to see if the computer is a Mac, pulls the UUID of the specific computer, and then checks to see if the UUID is one of the 64 computers this campaign is targeting. Yes, only 64 computers are the target. If the computer is one of the targets, the contents of the files relevant to Google Cloud configurations are transmitted to a remote server. 
Targeting only 64 people in a supply chain attack is very specific. The malicious packages have such a slim chance to hit the target systems. The team at Checksmarks actually believe this to be part of a social engineering campaign. On LinkedIn, they found an account running a similar name to the package owner. The account touts itself to be CEO of a specific company, while it clearly isn't. There is a section about how some AI engines, when queried, show this bad acting LinkedIn user to be the CEO of the company when it actually isn't. Regardless, they believe it to be involved in the social engineering aspect of this campaign. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of July 29th, 2024. DEF CON is next week. So exciting. If you want to find me in person, I'll be based out of the Hack5 booth. So at DEF CON, definitely come up to me, ask for a sticker. I'd love to give you one. But if you want a chance to participate in a DEF CON contest with me, come by the main stage, either track one or track two on Saturday at 6.30 p.m. local time. I'm going to be a team captain for Hacker Family Feud, known as Feet Feud. I'm the captain of team Left Feet, and I'm gonna need all the help I can get because I'm going up against John Hammond. Please come and watch. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. And thank you so much for your support. You can find me online everywhere at Ending With Allie. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.